hello welcome to the third installment of the series rest for some months now we'll be learning about the word rest the lord has been opening us up to his will regarding the female gender the lord has been enlightening upon the female gender and the lord has been giving us strategies on how to leverage his will for us without losing anything on how to be purposeful women also having good marriages on how to live a balanced life without having to lose one of our favorite things that we love the lord has been helping us for the past three months and today we are going to be talking about building building briefly can we just pray that the lord will open up the eyes of our understanding as we want to search his word the Lord Himself will open us up, but the Lord Himself will teach us that everything we've been learning here shall be profitable, and everything we've been learning here shall make us wise, and everything we've been learning here shall open up our path to light that will not be stranded in life, will not be stranded, and the investment of heaven over our lives shall never go to waste in jesus name amen once again welcome to the third installment of this series rest and today we are going to be talking about building for the first installment we talked about basking in god's love the second installment we talked about becoming and today we are going to be learning about building like I've always said, a lady that will do the will, the will of God, a lady that will live for God, a lady that will co-create with God, a lady that will be everything God has destined her to be, will be someone that is living from the point of rest, from the point of rest. And one thing we've learned in the past is that rest is not a day rest is not an activity rest is a person rest is the person of jesus christ rest is, rest is, the, is in the person of jesus christ and we need to be intimate in our relationship with just we need to be more intentional in our relationship with jesus christ beyond the beyond religion beyond the church activities we do and every other thing our relationship with the person of jesus christ is very very vital to our fulfillment in life the female gender is not just anybody the female the female gender when god created the female gender he didn't create us out of mistake was very very intentional about our creation very very intentional the lord wanted to help the man he created the female no wanted to help the world he created the female gender long before there ever was a world problem there was a world answer before there was a problem in the world there was an answer already and that answer is woman I know we've always heard that the woman is, is a gate in the spirit, the woman is this, the woman is that. I want you to be conscious of the fact that you are an answer. You carry solution. You carry solution. The female gender is not just anybody to God. The female gender is not just anybody to God. The female gender and the Holy Spirit perform the same responsibility. And if this Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, how much more the female gender? You are that important. You are that important. And no wonder why the society is always against the woman. The, the female gender has been sexualized. Even the male gender no longer respects the value the woman carries but we shouldn't allow that to disturb us to disturb us we shouldn't allow that to distort us we shouldn't allow that to redefine our identity because in christ we have an we have our identity magazine do not define us social media do not define us we have our identity in christ 
we have our identity in Christ Jesus. In the book of Songs of Solomon, Jesus Christ described the female gender. He said, we are the theme of his song. So when Jesus Christ sings, he is singing about us. When Jesus Christ sings, he is singing about us. The Lord is in death, the Lord is desperate of us. Not only is our heart after God, the Lord's heart himself is after us. The Lord is the Lord himself is longing for us. The Lord himself is yearning for us. Because the woman is just another definition of answer. The woman is another definition of answer. Every abnormality we see in the world today is because a woman is not taking her place as a solution provider. It's because the woman is not fulfilling her role as an answer. As an answer. Because every, every female every female has a problem she has been sent to solve in every sphere of influence every female every female has a role that she has been sent to solve that she has been sent to solve Yes, the environment is ash. Yes, the society is ash on the female gender. But yet, we are so, so on God's heart that he has said to call us into rest. He has said to call us into himself. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Irrespective of what the society is saying, there is rest available for you. There is rest available for you. There is rest available. There is rest available. And if a woman, if a woman is not nurtured from the point of rest, there is no way she can nurture her own. There is no way she can nurture our family. And one of the ways to effectively bring change into the world is to bring change to the family. When the family is right, the world will be right. And a woman cannot rule, a woman cannot bring that rest into her home if she herself is not experiencing rest. So the, so the solution to the problems in the world is still on the female gender. The solution is still on the female gender. There is a quote that the perspective of woman tempers and refines men just as they create an environment for the women to flourish. The perspective of women, the way women view things, tempers and refines men. The way we view things to refine men, even as these men create an environment for us to flourish. But if you look at our society today, the environment is ash. If you look at our society today, it is ash. Women are sexualized. Women are underrated. Women are, are defined as the weaker vessel. Even in the corporate world, women are intimidated. Women are intimidated. And when you are intimidated, when you are not appreciated, when you are not respected, you tend to call back into your shell. You tend to no longer believe in the in the capacity of what you can bet, you tend to no longer believe in yourself. 
And another distraction, another major distraction we have now in the world as women is the distraction of social media. If we are going to do the will of God, we should not deceive ourselves. We cannot afford to live on social media. Neither can we afford to live for social media. A lot of things are online now. The only thing you need to do is to have a, a be able, be able to dress well, have good camera, and a little bit of scripture. Just look good, good makeup, good wig, good phone, then add scriptures. Then people are liking your pictures, people are commenting on your pictures. Forgetting that, even beyond the mama and stars on social media, every one of us should go back to our secret place and seek God. Every one of us should go back to our secret place and seek God. Yes, I know the word is now online. The word is now online. But there is a pattern of old. There is an old pattern we've been called to follow. There is an old pattern we've been called to. We cannot afford to easily get distracted because of people that have the form of power denying the power itself. They look like power, but they do not have the power. We cannot afford to be distracted. We cannot afford to be deceived. If you want to fulfill your life purpose, you cannot have you, you shouldn't be living on social media, neither should you be living for social media. Because you grow on what you feed on. You grow, you grow on what you feed on. You grow on what you feed on. And if the Lord has called you on an assignment and you are not feeding on what the Lord is giving you, there is no way you can fulfill that assignment. And every one of us will be, will be called on an assignment. We have been called on an assignment to be an answer. When the Lord sees you, He sees an answer. And we are not solving a problem. You, you're, you're causing more problems to everyone, even the male and society at large. We, cannot, we can no longer afford to be nonchalant, neither can we afford to be careless, neither can we afford to be lazy. We need to awake to what we've been called. We need to awake to our identity in Christ. I know marriage is important, but be before marriage, your relationship with God must be strong. You cannot give out in marriage what you have not done as a single person. Ma power doesn't just descend on you because you've gotten married if you've not have, had the power as a single lady. I know we've been told that our, in addition to our couple goals, we should also be able to raise, we should, we, should be, we should also be able to do things supernaturally as a couple. How will you be able to do things supernaturally as a couple if you've not begun to live life supernaturally as a single person? You cannot give off in marriage what you've not done as a single person. The only thing marriage will do for you is to amplify that which you've done as a single person. Marriage amplifies. Marriage amplifies. So if you've been sleeping as a single lady, there is no way you just enter into marriage and just begin to bond. It doesn't work that way. Don't be deceived. Even if you, you are married to a general overseer, it does not work that way.
so I want us to have this understanding that we've been called to be answers to solutions. We've been called to be answers. And not only have we been called to be answers, we are responsible for each other. We are responsible for the other lady because if the other lady is sleeping, you are not safe. Because if you are solving the problem you've been sent to solve and the other lady is not solving her own problem, you are at the detriment of that lady that is sleeping. So until every one of us arrives, we cannot be safe. We should be responsible for it is very very important for us to be responsible for each other make sure the person your, your the lady next door is not sleeping we should be responsible for each other for each other And having seen that the environment is not favorable for women to flourish, so they can have confidence in themselves, an average lady in the world is concerned about having big tummy. She's concerned about her body shape. She's concerned about the people on her face. She's concerned about a lot of things. She doesn't even love herself. How will she be able to accept love from other people? She's not loving to herself. The, the, male, the male gender makes the environment harsh and intimidating. Seven breakfast anyhow. Ladies begging guys not to leave them at all. Ladies begging to, to engage in things just to feel among ladies exposing their body just to get over their insecurity i strongly believe that the reason why we have cleavages out with a little bit of slit is because these ladies are suffering from insecurity so they believe that the appreciation the attractions they get from other people outside cover up for their weakness which is a lie deeply seated behind expulsive and seductive attire is a sign of insecurity now how will this lady that is insecure about herself begging for attention with her body and all that how will she be able to do the will of god how will she be able to solve the problem she has been called to because even she's not confident in herself enough to cover up because she feels if she's covered up she won't be seen The change we want to see in our society begins from each family. Begins from each family. And if the women in these families are not doing what they're supposed to do, then there is no way we will see these changes because every arm robber comes from a home. Every champion comes from a home. Every good person comes from a home every bad person comes from a home that's popular saying that charity begins from home not charity alone but every other thing both good and bad begins from the home and abuse the home the woman the woman abuse the home the rapist that came from a home was built by the mother The bad politicians that we see in the society came from a home and they were built by their mothers. Every good and bad thing we see in society today was because a woman permitted it, a mother permitted it. Every good and bad thing happens because 
a female gender permitted it. When we get our roles in our homes right, then we will be able to easily, easily flow out changes in society because when we get to the society, we will not be the only one betting the change. The husband that have also enjoyed the atmosphere we've created in the home will bet change. The children we've also built will bet change in the world. That is how we create changes. So when we say the responsibility is on the female gender, we mean when the female gender rise to our role as the answer, it's just like a force. You'll be able to pull those she has been building in our own to also bring these changes to the society. And if every woman does that, the society will be a same place. So today I want us to have this understanding that we are not just in the world to be better to go to primary school, secondary school, institution, get a job, get married, give birth to children and die. No. No. The very first reason why you are here on earth is to do the will of God. The main reason why you are here on earth is to do the, the will of God. Every other thing is just a medium through which you do the will of God. You go to school is a medium through which you go. You do the work of God. You get ma marriage is a medium through which you do the work of God. Through which you provide the solution you've been sent to solve. So where do we leave the main assignment and follow the medium blindly? And your career is a medium through which you do the, the will of God. Anywhere you find yourself is a medium through which you do the will of God. Your, your main will is to do the will of God. Is to have an understanding that you are on an assignment to build. To build. You are on an assignment to build. And having known that the society is ash. Nothing is favorable for the woman. The Lord Himself in His infinite mercy has decided to bring us into rest, into Himself. Come unto me, all ye that are in labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. The book of Psalm 23, verse 2. Psalm 23, verse 2 says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. The E there is referring to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ makes you to lie down in green pastures. Do you know what it means to lie down? Do you know? Can you just imagine what a green pasture will, will look like? A very big land, green, refreshing, peaceful. Then Jesus Christ makes you lie down in green pastures. He leaves you beside the still waters. He leaves you beside the still waters. He restores your soul. This is what rest is. You are not distracted by the noise in, in the society. You are, not, you are not distracted by the amount of divorce. You are not, you are not distracted by the number of girls that are talking that are talking positively about polygamy because who because jesus christ in person of rest himself makes you to lie down in green pastures because he knows hey lady you are an answer to the probe to this problem and you cannot solve this problem except i make you to lie down in green pastures except i lead you beside sea waters except i restore your soul this is rest this should be our daily living this is how we should live our life daily daily living in rest Daily living in rest. We, we do not we do not get into rest today and jump out tomorrow. No. No. You are daily living in rest. It makes me to lie down in great pastures. 
So even when I'm intimidated in my workplace, it makes me to lie down in green pastures. That doesn't mean I'm going to lose confidence in myself because the guys there are intimidating me because Jesus Christ makes me to lie down in green pastures because Jesus Christ lives beside still water. This is why your relationship with Christ is important. This is why your secret place is, it is, is important because this is the place where your soul is restored. This is the place where your soul is restored. And like I said earlier, marriage is a medium through which you do the will of God. Marriage is a medium. It is a medium. It is not the main thing. The main thing is you doing the will of God. And you cannot do the will of God if you are not in parapa. So we're the ones sending you on an assignment. You are an answer to the worst problem. And not only should you be responsible for yourself, you should also be responsible for your sisters. Because if you are solving your problem and she's not solving her problem, nobody is saved. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody is safe. Now look at the number of females we have in the world. How do we achieve this? How do we achieve this? One of the ways to achieve this is to know, is to be selfless. You cannot just afford to be selfish. You cannot just, you cannot afford to be selfish. To be selfless, to be recklessly selfless. Because you know that you are love mate. Jesus, see, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ doesn't love one person more than another person. No. Jesus Christ does not love, does not love the, right, the most righteous person on earth more than the worst sinner on earth. Both the most righteous person and the worst sinner, he loves the same way. The same way. Every one of us are love mates. Every one of us, we are love mates. So if we claim to be love mates, if we claim to love Jesus Christ, shouldn't we also be intentional about who Jesus Christ love? What does love mean? So if the Lord has told, has told us that he's going to make us lie down in green pastures, he's going to lead us beside the still waters and he will restore our souls, we need to begin to also look for strategies to bring our sisters into this rest. We need to also begin to look for strategies to bring her into this rest. And like I said, you cannot give out what you've not experienced. You cannot give out what it is that you've not experienced. I just pray that these words will quicken our heart. I just pray that these words will quicken our spirit. This was we quicken our spirit. It's a quicken our spirit. As female genders will be sent to build. We are builders. We are builders. We'll be sent to build our homes. We'll be sent to build our homes. When we build our homes, our men will be refined and they will also go into the society and create change. Our children also will go into the society and create change. We'll be sent to build. And the book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 15. Malachi 2 15 says, And did not he make one, yet... Had he the residue of the spirit, and wherefore one? Why does he make us one? Why does he say a man and a woman should get married? It is because so that that he may seek a godly seed. 
that he may seek a godly seed. So a man and a woman are made one so that they will produce godly seeds. They will produce godly seeds. That is what God Almighty is after. Because if the world is filled with godly seeds, then we are safe. We are saved. Because godly seeds grow up to be godly adults. They grow up to be godly adults. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1 says, Every wise woman builds her own. So you are considered wise when you build your own. You are considered wise when we see your family and we can see that these ones are well built. These ones are well built. Every wise woman builded a house. Builded a house. As a woman, you are not small. As a woman, you are not small. You are not small. You are God's answer to the world's problem. You are God's answer to the world's solution. You are God's answer to the world's problem. You'll be sent as a solution. To the world's problem. You are a co-creator with God. God is intentional about your seed. God is intentional about your seed. And so when a man gets married to you, he is not doing you a favor. He's not doing you a favor. He's just giving you a platform for you to come and walk with him so you both can chase ten thousand so that what you've been doing as a single lady can be amplified so it is there not to say hey i said yes and all that the guy also should be able to say thank god she said yes because she is worth the weight a man should be praying to God to be able to get married to you. As a woman, a man should be praying to God. He should be praying to God to be able to get married to you. Every wise woman builds a house. And how do you build? Obviously, you build from you build from the place of rest. And there is no way you can experience rest if you are not in a relationship with Jesus Christ. There is no way you can experience rest if your secret place is on and off. You are there today, tomorrow you are on social media, next tomorrow you are in your secret place, another day social media and all that. You cannot afford to be doing on and off at this stage of life. Your secret place is paramount to what you've been sent to do. You, you shouldn't be too busy to do to seek God. You shouldn't be too busy to read your Bible. You shouldn't be too busy to pray. Because that is what you live for on a nose. Enough with the, I'm, I'm too busy. I have a lot of things to do. If you have a lot of things to do and you are not doing the main thing, come on, you are just doing rubbish. You are doing in the nonsense. You are doing the things that do not make sense. If you are doing a lot of things, and the most important thing you are not doing then come on that, that is not profitable not to you not to every other person in the world now when we talk in the Bible when we talk about generation of Jacob when we say generation of Jacob another way to describe them is a generation that seek God Jacob generation is a generation that seek God. They are seekers of God. Just like Psalm 24. Psalm 24 verse 6 says, This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face. O Jacob. O Jacob. And God 
was so intentional that he made the 12 tribes. Now, don't just think it is Bible story. When we get to heaven, we are going to have a better understanding of how important these 12 tribes are to God. Rachel and Lee gave birth to children and God decided to use 12 of the children for himself. Each of them, each of the children of Rachel and Lee, they stand for something in the kingdom of God. When it comes to building, when it comes to a wise woman building her home, Rachel and Lee, they are a prototype that we can learn from. They are a prototype that we can learn from because each of them, each of them stood, each of them stand for a thing in the kingdom of God. The twelve tribes of Jacob, they stand for something in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God. The Bible recorded that Jacob and Rachel and Lee built the house of Israel. They built the house of Israel, and Israel they are considered as God's people. God's people. Can God see my children in future and decide to make them stand for something in the kingdom of God that will span to other generations? That will also make them to be considered as seekers of God. As seekers of God. Margaret Mead said, The solution to adult problems tomorrow depends on large measure upon how our children grow up today. The solution to adult problems tomorrow depends on large measure upon how our children grow up today. If our children grow up well today, there won't be need for adult problems. There won't be adult problems. And the Bible explained how important children are to God. The Bible explains how important children are to God. The book of Psalm 127. The book of Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Lo, children are an in children are an heritage of the Lord. Children are an heritage of of the Lord and the fruit of the fruit of the womb is his reward. So God has a reward, and the reward is the fruit of my womb. Kai, the fruit of my womb is God's reward. So what I do with how I build the seed in me. Is a reward to God. Children are an heritage of the Lord. And what does it mean to be an heritage, an inheritance? An inheritance. 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 An inheritance is what? Some a, something that you can that you get as Something you get because you are related to someone. Children are an heritage of the Lord. Inheritance of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. The fruit of the womb is his reward. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Another thing, another meaning for heritage is a tradition, a tradition, something that can be passed down from preceding generations. 
another definition says a birthright the status acquired by right so my children are god's inheritance my children are god's birthright I don't, I, I don't know if you understand. What have you got catered in my children that has become values should be passed out from generation to generation? Children are an heritage of the Lord. Of the Lord and Psalm 128 says Psalm 128 verse 3 says thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the size of thine house thy children like olive plants round the table thy children like olive plants round about the table why olive plants we have a lot of plants why olive plants I said to do a study on olive and I saw nine amazing attributes of the olive tree. Nine amazing attributes. One, longevity. Two, prolific. Prolific. Three, indestructible. Four, unpatchable. Five, generous. Six, ancient. Eight, sacred. Nine, elderly. Elderly. Long longevity, meaning. The values that have been inculcated in my children should be passed down from generation to generation. From generation to generation. Why the olive plant? Why the olive plant? Out of, out of thousands of plants God himself created. The olive, the olive tree is indestructible. It is in this because the root system of the olive tree is so robust that it is capable of regenerating itself even when the above ground structure of the tree is destroyed. The olive tree is indestructible. So we should build in a way that our children are indestructible. We should create systems that what we've learned, what, what we've taught these children shouldn't be easily picked or pushed on by birds. Why olive plants? Olive tree is generous. Large olive trees produce an average about 400 pounds of olives annually. Why olive plants? Unpatchable. Olive trees are drought friendly. They are, they are drought friendly. There's a popular saying, lily among thorns. Lily among thorns. Can lilies live? Can they grow effectively among thorns? That is why they did, that is why the Bible didn't say your children are like oh like they are like lilies, olive plants. Meaning, irrespective of the of how harsh the society the society and environment is, these ones they are unpatchable. It cannot move them. It cannot move them. And they are sacred. We know what it means to be sacred only. Only the olive branch branch was often a symbol of abundance, glory, and peace. The olive has been the symbol of peace, wisdom, glory, fertility, power, purity. Purity. The olive plant is also considered to be elderly. Elderly in times of edibility. And all that. So if you just think you want to get married and just birth children without knowing 
who these children are. Today, I'm telling you that your children, they are an heritage of the Lord. And what does heritage mean? Inheritance of the Lord. You give them back to God. You give your children back to God. That is his inheritance. The fruit of your womb is his reward. The fruit of your womb, the fruit of my womb is God's reward. Is God's reward. Is God's reward. A wise woman builds her own. A wise woman builds her own. And there is a thing I've always said, and it is not enough to, for me to say, I am a good woman, so my children are good and all that. If the, if the, next, if the lady next door is bad, our children will also get bad. And our children and my children will possibly meet in, on the street, or they will meet in school, or they will meet anywhere. And it is very, very easy for bad children to influence good children in negative ways the bible says bad communication corrupts good manners bad company corrupts good manners so i'm good when the, the lady never the lady next door is good and when our own lady next door is good and the circle continues like that then we are safe it is in my generation that it is wrong for an elderly person to correct your child. Because even now, the child will tell the person, you didn't give birth to me, you cannot correct me. In the early days, they tell, they, we've always heard that it takes a village to raise a child. A child is everyone's responsibility, not just the parent's responsibility. A child is everyone's responsibility. And... In a world torn apart by divorce and emotional detachment, we need even breeded friendships and strategic relationships in order to train and protect each other's children. That is a word by Lisa Brevet. So we cannot even afford to say, I am good. If you are good, the outside is not good, the society is not good. So you need to put yourself in a circle. That is all that is good. We need even breeded friendship, strategic relationships in order to train and protect each other's children. Mothers rescue, even if the child is not their own. M mothers rescue even if the child is not your own the child doesn't have to be your own before you take responsibility for that child i know us i know our generation has changed but please we need to come back we need to come back that the the, the child of a neighbor is also your child the child of your neighbor is also your child you take responsibility for that child as your own May none of us be content with the safety of our children alone, but instead grow in the understanding and awareness that all the children of this earth are our charge. If we have an understanding that children are God's inheritance, we shall see the child of your of your neighbor next door and also say that ah, you this child, you are also God's inheritance. You cannot just behave anyhow. I am taking responsibility for, for you. I am taking responsibility for you. Mother's rescue, even if the child is not their own. Even if the child is not their own. Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 6 says, True wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. A house is built by wisdom, established by understanding. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. 
knowledge what are you learning what information are you learning we have a lot of parenting coaches wendy ologe is doing a very amazing job on parenting get our courses get our books join our live stream and learn this is knowledge and when you have an understanding of this knowledge your own is established now it is the application of this knowledge that is wisdom Because when you, do, when you do not apply this knowledge that you've learned, then there is no way you can build anything. There is no way you can build anything. And a home, true wisdom is a house built. And by understanding it, it is established. And by, with, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yeah, a man of knowledge increases strength a man of knowledge increases strength the information you are exposed to either increase your strength or diminish or diminish your strength so you want to be exposed to knowledge that increases your strength and verse says, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude of counselors there is safety. This is where I'm going to. In the multitude of counselors there is safety. I'm watching over your child. You are watching over your child. That is true. That child is safe. Another person is watching over that child. That is three. That child is safe. Another person is watching over that child. Every one of us, we are watching over, over every child. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So yes, it takes a village to train a child. It takes a village to train a child. And I'm going to stop here for this installment. I believe you've learned something. I believe we have learned something. I believe that we now know that the journey is from yourself, your relationship with Christ, to your family. To your family. And once again, I pray that may none of us be content with the safety of our children alone. But instead, grow in the understanding and awareness that all the children of this earth are our charge. All the children on this earth are our charge. And mothers rescue, even if the child is not their own. Mothers rescue even if the child is not their own. I leave you with this verse, with this Bible verse, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 to 28. Only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident talking of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. And also first King chapter five, verse three and four. First King chapter five, verse three. Thou knowest how that David my father, this is Solomon speaking, could not build a house unto the name of the lord is god for the wars which were about him on every side until the lord put them under the soles of his feet but now the lord my god has given me rest on every side so that there is neither adversary nor evil occurrence so you cannot build anything if you are not in rest Solomon said David could not build the house of God because there was war around him. Because there was adversary. And now that God himself has given him rest on every side, he built the house of God. 
So if, if you've not even heard anything that I'll be speaking to this morning, First King chapter 5, verse 3 and 4 carries powerfully the message. I pray the Lord will help us. I pray the Lord will continue to hold our hands as we go on this journey. I leave every one of us to God Almighty. Thank you for listening to this very point. You should share this with your sister. You should, you, you should share this with a fellow sister because everyone should be following this. Every single lady should be following this. You, you shouldn't just keep it to yourself because you have access. You should also make someone else have access to this information. I pray the Lord will help us. I pray the Lord will give us strength. I pray the Lord will help our relationship with Him. Thank you for listening to this very point. The next installment I'm going to be talking about out of our bellies. And I pray the Lord will give us His word. I pray the Holy Spirit keeps making intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be altered. God bless you. Thank you for listening to this very point.